going on page 35 when we're done. All right, so we just talked about the fact that we can have zero, one, or two solutions, but there is an extra word that we need to put in there. So quadratics can have zero, one, or two real solutions. Okay, there are things called imaginary solutions, which again, you get into in Algebra 2. We're not concerned with those right now, but I don't want you just to think that there's always just zero, one, or two solutions, period, because there are other solutions that are imaginary. Okay, so that's all we're kind of changing that right now. But if I have zero solutions, then it's going to look something, you can draw these now, look something maybe like this, right, because it's floating up, doesn't even touch the x-axis since that's where my solutions are. If I have just one solution, it might look something like this. It could be upside down as well. This point that touches the x-axis, what's that point called on a parabola? The vertex, good. And it would be the maximum or the minimum depending on which way it was flipped. If I have two solutions, then it would look something maybe like this, because it's gonna cross twice. Okay, so some basic things that you need to know. We're not gonna be graphing by hand and guessing at points anymore. Um, even if you've done it on the calculator, most of you probably didn't do it the real way on the calculator. If we don't get into that before the end of the school year, then you'll get into that in algebra two, but it's something I would like to be able to get to with you. All right, so those are your zero, one, or two solutions. So before we can factor them to solve them, we need to make sure that we know how to multiply them together. So if I have x minus two times x plus three, so to multiply those two things together, you can do that in a few different ways. One way is the box method. Um, if that's the only way you know how to do it, you really need to get yourself out of the box method. There's nothing wrong with it. However, if you go to calculus using the box method, you might get laughed out of the room. Um, the, uh, you may have done distribution. You might be familiar with that one. Hopefully you learned more than one way, but your teacher probably focused on one. Um, or maybe FOIL. And distribution is good because it works whether they're binomials or trinomials or whatever. So whatever you do is fine. I'm not going to make you change. I don't care as long as you can do it right. I'm going to do FOIL. That's what I will call it. But when I say, hey, we're going to FOIL this, if to you that means you're using the box method right now or you're using distribution, absolutely fine. I'm not going to make you do it one way or the other. You do it the way that makes the most sense to you and um, can help you get the right answer. So let me explain to those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about with FOIL, because there's always some people that have never even heard that. That's an acronym that stands for first, outside, inside, last. So if I multiply the first two together, x times x gives me x squared. Outside two together gives me 3x. Inside two together gives me a negative 2x. Last two gives me negative 6. Now, if you did the box, those are the four things that you have in the box. If you did distribution, those are the four terms you end up with after distribution. It's all the same thing because it's all going to get you the same answer. It's just how you organize it and what makes the most sense to you. So then when I combine my like terms, I get x squared plus x minus 6. So again, whichever way you do it is fine, but make sure you can do it and that you can do it correctly. Okay, everybody good? All right, so then I also want to look at this. What if I have x plus 3 squared? Does that equal x squared plus 9? No, it 100% does not equal x squared plus 9. And I, I see that so much, it just makes me want to scream. If this was x times 3, then yes, you square the x, you square the 3. But it's not, it's x plus 3. So you don't get to distribute the squared. It doesn't work that way. Um, what this means is x plus 3 times x plus 3, and then you either FOIL, do distribution box, whatever. So if I FOIL it, first is x squared, outside is 3x, inside is 3x, last is 9. So what you get is x squared plus 6x plus 9, which is way different than x squared plus 9. Okay. So make sure you know how to do this correctly. This comes up a lot. Some people miss it every single time all year long. That is called not being coachable because I re-explain it over and over to these same people and they're still doing the same thing. So you have got to be coachable in math as well and be able to adjust. Otherwise, you're just going to keep making the same wrong, doing the same wrong things. Questions?
All right, so that's multiplying them together. Binomial because it has two terms. A trinomial has how many? Three. So we multiply these binomials together to get a trinomial. When you factor a trinomial, basically what you are doing is just the opposite of FOIL, or whatever you want to call it. Multiplying takes you one way, factoring takes you the other way. So when we start with this x squared plus x minus 6, then when we factor it, we would end up with x minus 2 times x plus 3. I just used that same one we did up there. So we took it, we multiplied it, and got a trinomial. You can take the trinomial when you undo it. That's called factoring. That's one of the things it looks like. Okay, so I understand the terminology too. We all good so far? All right, so in order to get to the factoring trinomial part, we have to be able to factor out the GCF, bless you. In order to be able to factor it out, we have to know what it is. What does GCF stand for? Greatest common factor. Okay, so um, if I give you 20x squared minus 15x equals 0, okay, we're going to factor out the GCF. So what is the GCF here? 5x. 5 is a factor, but the greatest common factor is 5x because they both terms can be divided by that. So your 5x comes out front. Then you got to figure out what's left over. 20x squared divided by 5x leaves you with what? 4x. And then negative 15x divided by 5x leaves you with minus 3. Equals 0. It's an equation. Don't lose your equation. There you go. We factored out the GCF. You can do that, right? Yes, you can do it correctly, hopefully. All right, so I want you to do this one on your own. I'm going to give you 6x to the fourth plus 15x cubed plus 3x squared equals 0. Is that a quadratic equation? No, it is not, okay? But you can still factor out the GCF, so I'll give you a second to do that. I do. The pencil sharpeners are in the back in that yellow box. Those little plastic ones work for this. All right, so the first thing I want to know is what is the GCF? Maritza, where are you? All right, what is the GCF? 3x. What do y'all think? Is she close? 3x squared. Okay, she showed, decided she wanted to change her answer, so we'll let her change her answer. 3x squared. All right, so when I do that, y'all can just tell me what am I left with in here then? 2x squared plus 5x, wait, plus 1 or plus 3 or plus x plus 0? Plus 1. Okay, and I know not everybody in here is really thinking 1 because they never are. Remember this. When you are doing this, it is 6x to the 4th divided by 3x squared. That gives you 2x squared. 15x cubed divided by 3x squared is 5x. 3x squared divided by 3x squared is 1. It is not 0. That's a very common wrong thing. And x, for some reason, is a common wrong thing. Also, remember this. When you factor out the GCF, that's the opposite of distribution. So once you factor it out, if you distribute it back in, you should get what you started with. And if you don't, something's wrong. So if you just lose that last term altogether, that's a problem because now you only have a binomial. Okay, so be careful with that because it's a very common, kind of just a careless error sometimes, even when we understand what we're doing. Okay. Any questions? We're all good? All right. So I'm getting close to actually factoring. We need to know, be, to, in order to be able to factor, we need to know what standard form is. So who can tell me what the standard form of a quadratic is? You're close. Somebody help him out because he's on the right track. What you got? No, but that's close too. Keep going. Equals zero. Good. Okay, we got it. 
So it is ax squared plus bx. Melissa, what you doing over there? Yeah, put it away, away, or it becomes mine. ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. All right, that is your standard form of a quadratic. The order matters, or it's not standard form. Okay, if you don't put it in that order, greatest to least with the exponents, then it's the, the steps are not going to work out for you. Does it matter which side of the equal sign the zero is on, though? No, like it could be flipped around, the zero could come first, but you got to make sure that A, B, and C are in order that way. Okay, so let's talk about our actual steps. Step one is to identify as a quadratic. And I know people think that's kind of a stupid first step, but that is the biggest hurdle for a lot of people. You're not even paying attention to what you have. You're just trying to solve this thing just like it's a linear equation and you're making up math and none of it makes any sense. So make sure you take the time before you jump in and start solving something to figure out what the heck it is that you even have. So once we say, okay, we've got a quadratic, we can solve it multiple ways. There's um, quadratic formula, there's graphing, there's all kinds of things, but we are going to do it by um, factoring. So our step two then, we need to put it, so put in standard form. Most of the time what we say is to set it equal to zero, but the truth is that's not enough. It's got to be put it in standard form. So we will put it in parentheses here, set equal to zero. And then the other thing that's not necessarily something you have to do, but is definitely helpful, is to keep a positive. You can do that a couple of different ways by which way you put it on the equal sign or divide or multiply out by a negative one. But if, you're, if your A is not positive, then the steps aren't exactly like what's in here either. Okay? So we know it's a quadratic. We set it equal to zero. Step three is to factor out GCF if there is one, there isn't always one, but if there is one, you need to factor it out first. Yes, you could factor it without factoring out the GCF, but first of all, it makes it more difficult, and second of all, then it's not completely factored when you're finished. So factor it out at the beginning, it makes everything a whole lot easier, and the numbers are easier to work with. Okay, steps one, two, and three make sense? All right, we're going to work through the rest of the steps uh, with an example, so if you flip it over... I'm going to give you this one, x squared plus 10x equals 24. Okay, so we're going to do steps 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll talk about the rest of the steps. So first of all is identify, is it a quadratic? Yes, it is. All right, so then I have to put it in standard form. When you do that, that doesn't mean willy-nilly move things around. You have to actually solve. This is positive, so I'm just going to leave it alone, which means all this stays on the left. But i got to move this over. To do that, I have to do it algebraically, which means I get x squared plus 10x, then what? Minus 24 equals 0. Okay? So that is in standard form. It goes x squared x and then no variable at all. And step 3 is to factor out a GCF if there is one. Is there one? No. So I can't even do step 3. It says if there is one, so... I'm done with steps one through one, two, three. So make sure it's in standard form. You have factored out the GCF. Then you can actually factor into two binomials. So the way I have this set up, we're going to have to, what we just wrote right there, I want you to rewrite it right here so it's closer down here. So I'm just rewriting exactly what we had. All right, so today we are only looking at factoring, solving by factoring if A is 1. If your A is something other than 1, that is still something you should be able, you should know how to do, but we just don't have time to do it all today. So we're only looking at it when A is 1. So when A is 1, we are looking for two numbers that multiply to give us what? C, which is negative 24 in this case. Now, when we are simplifying square roots, the 1 doesn't count because it's a, not a prime number. But when we are factoring, one totally counts. So when you're looking at two numbers that multiply to give you negative 24, negative 1 times 24 is definitely a two numbers that would work, right? Then that means that 1 times negative 24 would work also. Ne 
Um, 2 divides into 24, so negative 2 times what? 12, which would, means it would also be 12 or 2 times negative 12. Does 3 divide into 24? Yes, so negative 3 times what? 8, and 3 times negative 8. Does 4 divide into 24? Yes, so negative 4 times 6, 4 times negative 6. Does 5 divide in evenly? No. And then we're back around to 6, which means we're back around to these, so it would just be the same thing backwards, so we don't need to worry about it. So we've got all these different choices about things that multiply to give us a negative 24. But not only do we need them to multiply to give us negative 24, it says now which will combine, what do we need them to combine to give us? Positive or negative? Positive. So positive 10, because that sign totally matters. So when I look at these factors that I came up with, I need the one that will the two that will combine to give me a positive 10. Which ones went out? Negative 2 and 12. So this right here, negative 2 and 12 are the two numbers that help us get our factors. So then to create our factors, we split the x squared and create two factors. And don't forget about the GCF. Did we have a GCF on this one? No, so I don't even need that. Don't make one up just because there wasn't one, right? So your answer has to look something like this, since we're going to get two binomials. It says to split the x squared, so we get x and x, and then you fill in the other holes with what you come up with up here, so that's minus x minus 2 and x plus 12. Oh, that's a 10. 12. Bring three. So here's, here's where things kind of fall apart for some of us that are already very good at this. This is factored. We have not solved anything, okay? And so if you're told to solve and you stop here, it's wrong because you didn't answer the question. So you have to understand that what you have here, this is factored, not solved. So if you're supposed to solve it and you stop here, it's wrong. If it says just factor it and you continue on and you solve it, then that's also wrong. So make sure you know what your end goal is. So since we are trying to solve, then step five is to set each term equal to zero and solve. And that's a pretty easy step, but you can't forget it. And then I'm going to continue my little line because it didn't print down here because we just have a little bit to write down here. So I'm going to take these two terms. I get x minus 2 equals zero x plus 12 equals 0. What is x minus 2 equals 0 equal when I solve it? Yeah, x equals 2, and x equals what? Negative 12. Okay? There are two answers. It's fine to leave it like that. You can put it in a different form if you want, but I wasn't going to get into I don't know who all learned what, so we're just going to leave stop there. All right, we all good? Any questions? All right, so we're going to go back up to the top of that same part that you're on because we're going to come down the right-hand side and do one more example together, and then you're going to do some on your own. All right, so on the top, the right-hand side, we are going to do... Hold on a second. Make sure I write this down right. We've got 2x squared equals negative 4x plus 6. We're going to solve this one together, and then you'll do a couple on your own. So step one, is this the quadratic? Yes, it is. Okay, step two, put it in standard form. Your A is already positive, so I would leave it alone and move everything else. So this is going to give me 2x squared plus 4x minus 6 equals 0. Signs can kill you here if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Step three is to factor out the GCF if there is one. Is there one? Yes. What is it? 2. All right. So this gives me 2 times x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Do not lose the fact that you have an equation anywhere along the way. Everybody with me? Okay. So once again, we're just going to rewrite this. You wouldn't have to rewrite it when you're actually doing it, but just the way these flow. So 2 times x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Okay. So You've got this GCF here. This guy right here, he just sits there, kind of like when we were simplifying square roots. He just sits there and waits to see what happens with the parentheses. He has no bearing on your next step, because what you're trying to factor is this trinomial right here 
And that's what you're focusing on. You just kind of leave him there, but we can't forget him because he's still important. So I look here, it says, because A is 1, we look for two numbers that multiply to give us what? Negative 3. Okay, so that could be negative 1 times 3 or 1 times negative 3. Do I have any more options? No, small numbers are nice because we don't have as many options, right? Um, so not only do they have to multiply to give me negative 3, but they have to combine to give me what? Positive 2. So that's a pretty easy decision because there's only two to choose from. That would be these right here. So this is negative 1 and 3. Those are the two numbers that I use. Everybody with me? All right, so to create our factors, we split, create two factors. Don't forget about the GCF. We had one here. What was it? Two, and then we have these binomials. I'm supposed to split them, x and x. These are the two numbers that I use to put in here, so that's minus 1 and plus 3. That is the factored version, not solved. If you leave off the GCF, you will get the factoring part wrong because you have changed the graph, you have changed everything about it. In the end, your solutions are the same. It's still going to hit the x-axis in the same spot, but the graph would look different, so it's not okay to leave it off. It has Leaving it off would still get you the right final, final answers, but that doesn't matter because we still have to be correct along the way. Otherwise, if we're sloppy with this now, then when you get into Algebra 2 and you try and be sloppy with it, it's just going to cause you all kinds of problems. So yes, I understand that if we forgot about the 2, we still get the same answers in the end, but we still can't leave it off. So that's the, ver that's the factored form. Then we take the terms and set them equal to 0, the x terms. The 2 equals 0 don't make any sense. So x, e x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, which means x equals 1 and x equals negative 3. Now. Don't just take the two factors you, decide, you decided you would use and just flip the signs and think that you're done and you, it'll work that way. Because if A is not 1, it does not work that way. And it, you don't really always understand that. So you need to go through the process on the very easy stuff. So then when it gets more complicated, you're just doing the same steps and it's no big deal. Okay? Any questions? We're good? Yeah, the two, is, the 2 is here when you factor it, and that's part of the factored equation. But when you're actually looking for the solutions, it doesn't have anything to do with the solutions. Okay, so it has to be here because I'm going to be looking at what do you have factored and looking at your solutions. So don't leave this off. You're going to miss a third of the problem. Okay, we all good? Okay, so let me give you the two that you're going to do on your own. You're going to do 7x plus 30 equals x squared and 3x squared plus 12 equals 15x. All right, so you're going to work on these on your own. I will come around and see if you need any help and check your answers. Um, I am not going to work through these in class, but what I am going to do after school is I'm going to continue the video. Actually, I'll probably make a separate video. Um, of me just working these. So if you need to see them worked out, you can go into Schoology and watch that video and it'll be me working these out and talking you through it. If you don't need to see it because you got them all right, that's fine too. Okay? So get to work on that.